Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to a new campaign that Greg was so kindly said yes that I can run, which is terrifying. <laughs> um, this is Monster of the Week, Samhain. Um, If you are not familiar with Monster, of the week. It's a powered by the apocalypse system, which means it uses 2d6 plus modifiers. Um, it is my favorite system to run and play in. Um, Greg's had other games sort of similar to this on the channel at Urban Shadows. Uh, Lady Blackbird's sort of similar, not the same, but sort of builds off the same principles. Um, but yeah, we are going to get into this fun game and hopefully everyone will have fun and not die. <laughs> Um, we will be using safety tools in this. We have lines and bells set up in the background as well as X and O cards. Um, sometimes things can get very dramatic, um, gory, creepy, too scary, anything like that. And it gives players the freedom to, you know, dial it back if they're not uncomfortable because no one wants to be uncomfortable playing a fun game with their friends. Um, but yeah, we're going to go around and introduce um, ourselves. Um, just who you are, your pronouns, who you're playing, their playbook, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, um, what about you, Petra? Oh, sorry. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Petra, uh, she, her. And today, for the first time, I'm playing Thomas the Flake uh, Di Paolo, so the, the flag is the name of the playbook, and it's a character who always sees or thinks, believes to see the bigger picture. Uh, everything is being connected, and he's also a little bit haunted, I guess you can say. Yeah, we'll dig into that. Um, Seth, what about you? Hi, I'm Seth, and uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I am playing Charlotte Vanderbrook. Uh, friends are she, her, and she is the professional. So we'll see if I can maintain that in any capacity. <laughs> Putting yourself up on a really high pedestal. <laughs> yeah, it was a bad idea. I just realized just now. <laughs> um, and last but not least, Greg. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg, Grimjack21502, he, him, pronouns. I am going to be playing the chosen Ben Wright, also he, him. Um, for those of you who were talking briefly about it in the green room, I love Powered by the Apocalypse. Uh, roll 20 does not want me to. So <laughs> I haven't been able to roll above, I believe, an eight uh, in any PBTA game I've ever played. Uh, Jim, thank you very much, my friend. So I picked as Ben's face claim the brightest, most passionate person that I could think of, somebody that may be able to break through the smog surrounding my Roll20 PBTA experience. My face claim for Ben Wright is none other than Lin-Manuel Miranda. Let's do this. Let's live. Let's die. Let's tell a story. Back to you, my friend. Um, we also have two other players, Jess, First of Hope, um, and Dingo. Where's my Dingus? They'll be here with us next week. Um, we just decided to go ahead and get some stuff out of the way so we didn't have to spend too much time, you know, rebuilding everything next week. But they'll be playing, Dingo will be playing the um, the Monstrous, and Jess will be playing the Spooky. So we're, we're going to be really digging into um, a lot of spooky, dark stuff um, this, this, this campaign. I'm very excited about that. But um, yeah, what we're going to do this session is, is very much a session zero. We're going to go around and get to know our characters, some of their moves, um, their specialties, that kind of thing, and build a little bit of history with the three of them here. And um, then we will, at, at the end, end it with a couple of start of mystery moves, an intro, and then next week we will jump straight into everything, and I'm very excited. But um, yeah, first we're going to start with, um, say, Thomas. So we started with Petra for the intros. Um, yeah, so if, if you wanted to uh, just sort of give a little bit of information on Thomas's past, uh, we can go from there. Yeah, sure. Um, so Thomas grew up as part of a um, normal family um, where he was uh, an only child. And then, um, so Dingo and I, we, we, we started to work a little bit on a background history because we decided that our characters are half siblings. Um, and so we said that both of our parents then went through uh, a divorce, awkward divorce. So we became a new family and then um, half siblings. Um, but the, the, the dominant, dominating aspect for, or in Thomas's 
life has been that as long for as long as he can remember, he's always seen apparitions of all sorts, like be it just little modes of light floating around all the way to fleshed out uh, ghost doing spooky spooky things and as he was a child it was still um you know fun for him and his parents probably assumed just for the longest time it was you know um imaginary friend kind of situation but it wouldn't it wouldn't go away and the older he got the more uh problematic it became because uh it got to a point where not a day would go by where uh he wouldn't see some kind of ghost specter uh, apparitions. And they also started to talk to him or at the very least he could hear them whisper, whisper which is with each other, just randomly speaking. And so needless to say that um, has been having a bit of an effect on his, his mental state and ultimately also on his physical health. And um, so since his, his family wasn't really inclined to think of paranormal reasons for what was going on with Thomas, uh, they did end up um, bringing him in, into uh, um, yeah to a, a psychiatric ward um, to have him checked out and he got some diagnoses and couldn't really convince anybody that uh, well, and not so much that he couldn't convince anybody. He was really confused about the whole, whole situation constantly going back between back and forth between um well is this actually real i think this is real but maybe you know the doctor said this so maybe maybe it's not maybe it's not real um and then um he and his half sister sunny and we will probably talk about this a little bit more had um a big fallout as sunny was in the process of becoming less and less human and more and more not human, <laughs> unhuman, and I let her explain all of that when she's when Dingo is here next week. But they had a big fallout, and up up until that point, they were really each other's confidant, uh, always there for each other, especially um, during the years right after the divorce and and whatnot. But then they had a fallout and um, stopped talking to each other for a while. And um, as Thomas. Um, Thomas sort of separated from the whole family family afterwards, tried to to um, build a life of his own. And that is also when he got into social media and figured that, you know, under normal circumstances, uh, uh, he could probably work as a model. So hands up, this is probably the most handsome motherfucker of a PC I ever created for a game. <laughs> and also the fanciest. Um, but you know, with with the whole uh, constantly being haunted situation, being having a normal job is not exactly the kind of thing you can go for. So he eventually so got into the whole yeah, let's let's be an influencer. On I don't know if we actually have Instagram. Like are we yeah, in it, our it, world? This, this is very based in our world, despite cool, the cool, supernatural. Cool. Yeah, it, it, Instagram, Snapchat. I don't know. I'm I, I'm not hip with the youth, so. <laughs> awesome awesome so yeah he figured out that um yeah this whole influencer thing especially nurturing the image of the uh sexy but mysterious monster hunter it worked it, it's it's been working really well um for him so he has he has gathered um quite a big following and he's being sponsored by uh, uh, young designers and and uh organic facial care product firms and whatnot <laughs> Um, he's selling he's selling fit tea that's basically what it is <laughs> <laughs> um that that as well but he avoids being around strangers too much so yeah but it helps it helps maintaining this image of you know who really is he we don't know um and it worked well for some time but then he had another uh low when when whole apparition situation got really gnarly again and he willingly went back into um into a hospital for a couple of weeks. And there, um, that was my idea. He was recruited out of there. So you finally run or came across someone who, um, whoever we are working for now, that's another question I wanted to discuss later on. That's so that gonna, was my- That's actually I, gonna come in with Charlotte. So yeah, Okay, cool, good. cool, cool. Um, 
so that then would be my my idea that the second time he was in the hospital that someone approached him and said you know what um yeah no it's it's real i'm not sure if that's gonna make it better for you <laughs> those are really those are really ghosts and so after that he he learned to deal with it to a certain extent but it's still so the whole apparition you know seeing things and it comes and goes in waves um he has days where it's really quiet but other days where he can he can't really go outside because it's just a constant uh it's almost like you know he's tuning into radio spirit world without really wanting to and he can tr control it to a certain extent and using you know spells and and to ban or dispel them for a time but they usually come back with a vengeance um so yeah and i would say at the point that we're starting he's just gotten out of a really bad bad phase so it's starting to get quieter Nice. Um, if you wanted to, you don't have to go into a big description of them, but if you wanted to um, uh, describe the moves that you have, mm -hmm. sort of to um, give a little bit more info on how you imagine Thomas. Yeah. So uh, he's always had, always had a, a knack for or liking for conspiracy theories. Not necessarily, you know, oh, did people really land on the moon? But more like how does the universe work you know why why is this and and i think one of if he had something like a a tagline it's probably something like there are no coincidences uh things things like that and um and he always he's always liked watching out for patterns which only intensified the more his apparition haunting problem increased because it, it gave him something to focus on and so um, one of the, the moves that I pick, picked is connect the dots, which at the beginning, when we're starting to look at a mystery, um, I can roll to immediately get a better idea of the wider patterns and the bigger picture. Um, and then I already said that he is quite a successful influencer on Instagram. And so I also went with the move net friends. And I don't know how, how exactly that is going to, to work, uh, work out, but I guess since, you know, he's not hiding the fact that he is a monster hunter, I'm not really sure if everybody actually believes that, probably not. But I guess there are a few followers who, who get the feeling that no, he's not, not fucking around with that. So he might have someone he can contact um, to help out with the mystery. And then the, the third one, uh, I picked just to make the character a bit more dramatic and, and tragic than he already is, is um, Suspicious Mind. Uh, so Thomas knows when someone is lying to him. That is my favorite move to take when you get advancements from another playbook. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so um, because we assume in this campaign that you guys have been working together for at least six months, sort of... Um, uh, you have a you have a you know a, a relationship and build together um i'm allowing all of the players to take um one move to advance um so in monster of the week you have five stats charm cool sharp tough and weird um so if you'd like to pick one of those um what happens if you roll in monster of the week if you roll a plus a 12 plus you get a sort of advanced it, it, you might um, get to add more harm. You might learn more information, that kind of thing. So um, which stat were, are you interested in advancing for Thomas? Um, and and so as a, as a mm -hmm. keeper, I recommend doing it, doing one that you might roll a lot. Yes. You're gonna find yourself rolling a lot, but it is up to you. Like if you want to min max, I don't care. It, it, it's up to you. Yeah. So since I already had a plus two on sharp, I actually bumped up charm to also plus two. Okay. So, but which one do you want to pick if you roll the um, plus 12 for though? Yeah. Oh, okay. Got that you would get the advanced. Because um, mm. usually you can't get that unless you have five advances. Since mm -hmm. it's a shorter campaign, probably won't get that far. So I just wanted to give you that ahead of time. Oh, okay. No, then, yeah. uh, then I would go with the, so it's, it's connected to specific move, you said? Yes, it's connected okay. to one of your basic moves. Okay, then I would go with connect the dots. Oh, no, no, I mean the, the basic moves. So like uh, to kick some ass or gather it from, or uh, read a bad uh, read a bad situation. If any of those that you feel like you might be doing a lot, oh, okay, that's the okay. stat I would uh, recommend 
Mm, make you okay, now I get it. Okay, now I get it. No, then I would go with, um, it says here, investigate a mystery. Yeah, so you would want to sharp. Your sharp would be yeah. your advanced yeah. stat. Yeah. So anytime you roll a 12 plus on a, a sharp move, anything that uses sharp, um, then you will get that uh, plus 12 um, okay. addition. Okay. Yeah, so we can dive into real quick the um, Flakes history. In Monster of the Week, you have a lot of a, a lot of um, options for how you want your history. Did you have any, besides Sunny, of course, uh, any that you wanted to um, specifically elaborate on from the prompts? Um, for, the, for the Flake, you have um, their close relative, um, their old friends who met through a long change of, of coincidences, you went through hell together, member of the same support group, fellow freaks, um, just some sort of like prompts like that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and also for Greg and Seth, if any of these stick out to you as well, you can help, you know, Petra decide what she wants to promise. But each playbook has their own, because what one one uh, uh, hunter feels about another hunter, that might not be mutual, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as, as you already said, I already said, I picked the close relative one for Sunny. Um, so for Dingo's character, we have siblings. And then, so uh, Seth and I, we already talked just a little bit of, um, so there's this thing going on between Thomas and Charlie. So because I read her um, her profile and Seth yeah. wrote that she almost like, a, I understood it to be as a kind of coping mechanism that she preemptively or in preparation sort of to, to knowing if, if something is going to be stressful she creates order just in general she likes to create order yeah. and so i was like well if, if thomas ha has really bad days where all he can do is trying to ignore uh, not go crazy over or with all the ghosts muttering around him and then possibly having to shoot some really sexy photos of him his his <laughs> cute little apartment is probably often looking like <laughs> So dichotomy of man right there. Freaky stuff, <laughs> sexy photos. Go on, that, that, that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, what can I say? Um, so, would you but, think but, that maybe like members of the same support group would work? Um, if, if you're both sort of dealing with your own, like I think like um, uh, certain ticks and things like that? Um, I was thinking either, either that or um, but, but so what I wanted to say is that that when she comes to his apartment, she automatically starts putting things back in order and he pretends that he's not noticing, but both know that she does it and it, it's it's gotten this thing. So I'm, I'm wondering actually if maybe they've known each other for a little bit longer. I have this other one, uh, old friends who originally yeah. met through a long chain of coincidences because I went over Charlotte's um, profile again and I felt like they compliment each other in mm. in in some ways in some of their behaviors, uh, but also similar in, in a lot of ways. So I think they might be good people for each other to have around when they're not doing so well. So if yeah. Seth, if you're okay with that, sure, yeah, that sounds perfect. And uh, I was was also thinking specifically because he's so um, paranoid and connected and like looking for things, and she's kind of part of something that's kind of shadowy, that could be part of the coincidences where it was kind of like, mm -hmm. those kind of fell together and, and it was like, oh, you're part of this thing. And it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I like cool. I like that a lot. Cool. And what about um, our chosen, Ben? I was thinking to go with the first one that somehow tied into it all. You've been keeping an eye on them, but I, so I don't, don't even have any read on Ben, um, so I'm, I'm going to listen what what uh, Greg has to tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, you can elaborate on that. But I but I had the idea with Thomas being Thomas and constantly seeing patterns, or thinking to see the bigger picture, that he thinks whatever Ben thinks of himself, that what he is chosen to do, Thomas thinks he's wrong. Like he's there, he's he has to play a very important role, but it's not what he thinks. And so that's why I'm keeping an eye. Uh, on him that's good friction yeah i like that a lot and, and like you said we'll um we'll we'll get more into to, to things with ben that maybe there's a specific mm -hmm. reason you he's on your radar besides working together that kind of thing cool um yeah we're going to hop over to charlotte our professional um and um give us a little bit of description of charlotte and her background that kind of thing 
Yeah, so um, Charlotte is... Oh, where do I start? <laughs> she was, she was, so she grew up kind of in the mountains, uh, way, way sealed away, uh, and her parents were particular and idi idiosyncratic. Um, I think her mom had uh, visions, and it was unclear whether those were actual visions or not. And her dad was like a doomsday prepper, basically. So they kind of fed off of each other and created a very unique home life. And uh, she grew up with two sisters and they kind of were really out there and isolated. And it was like, you're gonna learn how to hunt and sew your own stitches and uh, that kind of stuff. And um, eventually that worked out like it was bound to work out, which is that all kind of fell apart and the kids diaspora. And uh, at some point, and I haven't, I haven't, locked down i wanted to talk about the agency that she works for before we locked it down just to see if we could like throw some stuff back and forth but i think she got really really from a really young age realized that she or i guess probably got picked up by them um because i think the idea is that uh her mom's visions weren't false they just hadn't happened yet and so she was seeing stuff about charlotte's life and once that started happening, she got she got picked up by these kind of supernatural-esque uh, researchers. Um, so she's polite and soft-spoken. These are things I'm going to try. I'll, I'll, I, I don't know what will happen once I start getting into the character. But um, she's like, speaks softly, but carry a big stick. So she's not a pushover, but she's very gentle. And she's like, this is what I'm going to do. And... Uh, like Thomas said, she proactively creates order. Not in like a, she's not super like, she's not actually OCD. She just likes having things together and neat. And um, yeah, that's all that I have. On top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Rye House Institute, your, yeah. your who, who Charlotte works for, who, who Charlotte sort of answers back to. And um we can sort of decide why they have um, gathered all of you toward the end. Yeah, I, I was trying. I, I spent. I was trying not to lose my mind and go down a wiki hole, and then I did anyways. Uh, so I came up with the Rye House Institute. Um, the Rye House plot was like a, a, a plot to assassinate Charles II, and it didn't go through, and then everyone died. And there's not too much information about it, so I was like, I'm gonna put supernatural crap in there. And uh, I liked the idea that something supernatural happened that prevented the assassination and King Charles was like, hey, hey, hey. And so some, some group kind of came together to investigate that. And then that just kind of dogpiled and rolled downhill into modern day. It's like a group of academics, quote unquote, it's just kind of like rich, intelligent, random people. And I get to pick a couple like uh, I get two resources and two red tape. So it's kind of like qualities and bad sides to the agency. And I liked well-financed and good intel, uh, but I also liked uh, for the negative stuff, secretive hierarchy and cryptic missions because I want to make Katie's life hard apparently. <laughs> and, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so I like the idea that their, their mission on paper is to uh, study, predict and predict protect against like supernatural things um but there's also just like bursts of why are we doing this and it's like mm, you don't ask that question and uh it's kind of kind of sketch okay um and if you wanted to describe some of the the moves that you picked like like petra did you don't have to go into detail of the mechanics of them but wh why you picked them for charlotte just to give us a better hold on her character yeah I, so i i tried to kind of look through everybody else to see where they might be coming from and i i think her niche her good spot for her moves is to be a facilitator and help other everybody else do what they need to do um so i i did i did make her extra cool she's actually maxed out on cool because her tagline in my head immediately was she could take a nap in hell <laughs> and so that's why i wanted to go from there and uh so she's uh, and then, yeah, yeah, and then the other the other big one that I took was medic. So she literally has like a first aid kit with her all the time and can like fix people up. Um, 
So yeah, I just like the idea that she is there for the agency to help the talent do what they need to do, basically. Nice, nice. I like that a lot. Cool. Um, I would just like to add that the professional, one of the weapons they can choose is a grenade launcher. And the fact that you didn't choose that, you have a lot more self-control than I do. <laughs> I kept I kept imagining it and I was like, man, I, I don't know. This is giving me like wizard fireball PTSD. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. So I like the idea that because she has a medic kit and she has an assault rifle and I was like, she can't be slung. It can't be like slinging. Out. So I like the idea that she she because she looks very prim and proper and i like the idea that she has a big briefcase that she carries around and on one side is her notes and her notebook and her pencils and her paper and on the other side it's like the desperado guitar case that opens up it's just <laughs> yes. like a trauma kit and a folded up like machine gun and a pistol and a knife and all these things i i love this so much um yeah so what was the stat that you picked to advance for charlotte one that you wanted to really focus on um so I did. I did max out cool with my initial. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Stuff and then. Um, so it would the, be if, if you feel like Charlotte's going to be kicking more ass or reading a bad situation, that kind of thing. That what stat do you think that the basic stats that you think she would focus on most? So I was thinking like so there's a move that you that you do to protect someone. I didn't know what mm -hmm. what stat that would be. Uh, that towards. is cool. I believe. Okay. Um, but you can still, I mean, it, even though you have the, the, the plus three in that modifier, mm -hmm. um, you can still, that would be any time you roll cool, um, if you get a, a, ten, a 12 plus and you're going to get that advanced method. So that would okay. be acting under pressure, help out, um, things like that, that you would get that 12 plus um, a, extra benefit for. Cool. So protect yeah. someone says here it's tough. Oh, oh sorry. I was reading help out. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, uh, okay. protect someone would be tough yeah 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 sorry okay. i went immediately to help out <laughs> yeah so that for for tough that works i have a one in that okay. so could yeah so it. anytime you would roll kick some ass or protect someone any anything that a tough stat uh goes to the basic moves and you'll get that 12 plus cool okay um yeah and we can go into um your relationships did you have any off the top of your head like if you wanted to of course elaborate on charlotte's relationship with thomas yeah um I'd actually, I think I, I haven't thought about it too much above and beyond what we've already established. So I, I do like the idea that they've known each other for longer than this team has been together. Um, and they both uh, are kind of, uh, I think she realized much later than him, but they're both struggling with like past trauma of the supernatural. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that works that they kind of look out um, for each mm -hmm. other and alternate ways i can um, read you off some of the prompts if that helps you any uh the, the relationship with them has romantic potential so far it hasn't gone further they're on the agency's watch list you've been keeping an eye on them you're related you met on a mission and worked together unofficially um mm -hmm. they've worked with the agency before though they are well regarded you were friends back in training they pulled you and maybe your team out of a terrible mission and you got sent to deal with them as a hazard to the policies one time. Tell them how you resolved this. I mean, so. I am kind of a liability. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Oh, uh, yeah, that would be a, that would be a good starting point. Like maybe early in her career, she she went to go kind of keep tabs on him, and because he's so like he like caught onto it immediately and was like, oh hi, like <laughs> she's taking pictures from her van, <laughs> like. <laughs> what are you doing? And okay. uh, a report started from there. Awesome. And what about what about Ben? Ben, as the no. Oh, what what is, what about the relationship oh. with Ben? Sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> so that one, I, and I I don't know anything about Ben except for these. And if, if you want to wait until we can go into Greg's thing and, and go toward the end, like when you have some more information, yeah, on ben, you that's know what? Really I fine. might I might take a second and hear yeah. hear him out first. Now you can now you can let it back out, Greg. What about Ben? <laughs> ben. Okay, so uh no, uh Ben is a writer and he is a rather successful one, or he was. Um it, Ben was looking for his way to kind of get into not necessarily popular writing, but um he wanted to be a writer and he wanted to be a successful one, so popular writing it was. And he's not sure exactly what drew him to base a lot of his or his early works off the Roman Catholic Church, but he began to just, you know, go internet diving. And that led to trips to Rome, trips to Constantinople. 
And what he uncovered throughout the course of maybe two, three years worth of nonstop research is that the entire, well, not the entire, but at least once a generation, the idea of the Roman Catholics' sainthood is a lie. There's one saint that was promoted during a specific time that their history's fake. That person never existed, at least in the way that they were described as being of a saintly nature, of a perhaps a martyr that was blessed and then taken to sainthood. And so he began to look for patterns and he found one that it seemed that every generation there was a saint named at a later date for deeds that were never truly committed, at least in the way that they were fabricated in the in the books. And so he continued to look. And as he did so, he realized that there was a thread, not a relationship or a blood thread, but more of a, like a handing off of a baton, whether it be figuratively or spiritually. And he wasn't sure exactly how it happened, but all of these pseudo saints had been writers and researchers and historians. And he realized that he was the next one. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, we're going, if you want to, okay, so the thing with The Chosen, it's, it's a, it's a very, it's a fun playbook. It, it has a lot of weight to it. I mean, the name is The Chosen. Um, uh, what did you, when, when you are The Chosen, you have a, a, a fate. Um, you're basically meant to save the world and it, it all rests on you. That's a lot of pressure. So what did you find, how did you find out you were the chosen one? It's more specifically that, did anyone contact Ben or was this something he's just sort of holding around that that's like on his shoulders, but he hasn't revealed to anyone yet? Well, he never would have made the leap himself. He never would have figured out that he was the next in line for all of this if it hadn't been for somebody approaching him that wasn't a rival writer, but was mm -hmm. another historian that was following a parallel bent of research. And it just got to the point where they were at the same place at the same time, checking out the same book in the same library and they hit. And this person is mechanically his nemesis. And so this person believes themselves to be the chosen one and through more, not pride now perhaps pride or arrogance the nemesis revealed that they were further along in this research by disclosing that they believe themselves to be next in the chain and that got ben thinking and because of their actions towards him he pretty much assumed that they believed he could possibly be the chosen one as well and ben since has figured out that he is the chosen one so. yeah, yeah yeah or at least he thinks um yeah, so if you wanted to also like other ones and then explain a couple of why you, the chosen does get two moves automatically just to bend in with, or to, to to build in with their character, but if you wanted to choose maybe why you picked the big entrance, uh, how that how that builds into the person Ben is. Okay, so it's weird because we're doing an RPG theater of the mind, but let me let me put the I'm, I'm going to move the curtains aside for a second so you can see what Greg sees whenever he wanted to pick um, a big entrance because uh, basically for those of you that don't know and I didn't until I picked this a week or two ago that whenever I uh, come into a dangerous situation I can do anything that's kind of like a performance related speech monologue that could draw the attention of enemies or the dangerous situation kind of refocus it and so I did pick Lin-Manuel Miranda as my face claim and also the Chosen has a specific weapon that they can craft uh, I'll let you know that mine is basically a flail or a, a long ball chain. And all I could think of was imagine Lin-Manuel Miranda doing the chain with, uh, remember Gogo from Kill Bill? Yes, the, yes, yes. Lin-Manuel Miranda doing that. <laughs> and that so cool. is the big entrance. So. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um... Uh, and also for you, did you, have you decided a, a stat that you would like to advance? Tough. Tough. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and so maybe, maybe you'll roll above an eight and you'll get to take advantage of it. I certainly hope we'll so. See. <laughs> yeah. I, I picked Lin-Manuel Miranda to be tough and to be able to work the chain like Go-Go from Kill Bill. 
that has to reward me, Roll20, right? It has to. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay, we can dig into your relationship, your history now. Um, you also have a couple of, a, a, a list of prompts if you need them, but anything off the top of your head if you wanted to start uh, exploring now, that's fine. Sure, well, uh, kind of bouncing off what uh, Petra said, um, that Thomas believes <laughs> that my course is different than what it actually is. Um, one of my prompts is a rival at first, but you came to a working arrangement. And so maybe twisting rival a bit just to be, you know, um, a contradiction. Definitely feel free to, yeah. to, to mush these into the, the right mold that you need. They're, they're just jumping off points. I'm not going to make you keep them specifically. Right. But I can see that the, that the two of them, if Thomas came just in and say, no, 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 you got it all wrong. Like, yeah, 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 you have a big role to play, my friend, but it's 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 different from what you think it is. That that must, <laughs> you know, probably rub him the, the wrong way, but uh, yeah. Yes. But it's not like he dislikes, it's not like he dislikes Ben. Although I'm not yet sure what Thomas thinks about the theatrics of, uh, <laughs> of, of Ben. <laughs> By the way, what kind of uh, Lin Manuel Miranda is he? Uh, uh, long hair, like Hamilton one, short hair. No, you know what? Um, I I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to go crazy. No, um, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go with short hair. This is short sure. hair, Lin Manuel Miranda. This is uh, yeah, present day, we'll say. Um. Okay. What about what about Charlotte? With Charlotte um, now, um, I was thinking. One I, I will. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go right ahead. Go right ahead because I know that I, you have something just, too. I was just. I don't know if it'll affect anything, but I was just thinking, like as you were saying, like the the Roman Catholic angle is interesting because I think the original Rye House plot was a, um, like a Protestant plot because Charles II was getting a little too Catholic, and I don't know if they're still secular or non secular, but I just thought that was like nicely meshed together. So just throwing that out there. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, in the Heights. Um, so uh, I'm a little torn because I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with uh, Charlotte yet, but how's this one? Because this is I think this is a fantastic prompt, but they could have been the chosen one instead of you, but they failed some trial. Initially, I had thought this to be sunny in that maybe it wasn't that that she failed a trial but her family failed a trial for like the the end of the generation that could have prompted the curse or because of the curse the trial was failed i and, absolutely love that yeah yeah, yeah I like, like that like like the parents specifically being like nope nope running away from fate like we're hiding in the woods we're gonna get away from this that this ties in a lot yeah to charlotte's yeah. background and then fate was like <laughs> right she got fired back out, but the, everything changed. That's really cool. I like that. So Ben, is that something that you've discovered in your research that this person, or at least this lineage, and that's how you've made the connection with Char with Charlotte? Right, right. And it, it's it, there's a precedent for it in his research in the past that there wasn't ever just one person. It was almost as if fate or the spirits or God or whoever kind of had a bit of a Hunger Games going on with a, a collection of individuals that one would eventually, perhaps with a skill set, perhaps just because they are uh, attrition, they made it to this pseudo sainthood with a falsified background and... Uh, you know, a, a death date that's unexplained, but recognized by the church as their highest honor. Not sure exactly why, not sure what it entails, but there was more than one with each generation. Just one earned the power. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the curse and the things like that could definitely have been played in throughout history. You know, each generation suffering from one of these, you know, doubters, or, you know, doubting Thomases or so to speak, that would come through and not believe that they are the chosen one. Doubting Thomas. Okay. I, I like that. Um, How old is Ben, by the way? Ben is uh, 34, 34 years old. All right. And then Charlotte, I think, is 30? 30, yeah. Okay. Thomas is 26. Um. So does that change your relationship, uh, Charlotte, with Ben? Like, has that put something sort of solid in your in your mind? Yeah, um, 
see. Well, I mean, it, it definitely changes it. I don't know if this guy has got something solid, but I'm excited about it. Uh... I don't know. I I, uh, I only have a couple of them written down right here. I'm not they sure. could be, it could make sense that given what Ben has been researching, that they're on the watch list of the yeah. Rye Institute. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like that too, that you are, you are, um, you're keeping an eye on them, whether or not Bill, uh, Ben, sorry, I saw Bill's name in the chat, <laughs> whether or not Ben knows that or not. Um, yeah, we can sort of play to find out. Cool. Yeah, especially since I'm coming from the agency and it's somebody we work for, I think it would stand to reason that, at least in some capacity, everybody else like, kind of showed up into their lives and was like, just like me. Okay, I like that. Um, yeah, I think there was something else I wanted to. Oh, yeah, I had a couple of questions just to f further. Um, go into this uh thomas do you know about sunny's sort of uh losing her humanity uh do, do you, is that something that is well known to thomas yes yeah so it's it's uh a bit of dingo and i decided that it's a bit of baggage between between the two of them uh because one reason they have this really stupid fight they can't even really remember how it started it was just it was while she realized that she was changing and which obviously she was trying to to hide it and you know it was just emotions building up and snapping at each other and then they just separated but he we haven't decided really how he found out but he definitely found out that um what was happening to her that um she was no longer in the in the process of of becoming uh, an undead Mm -hmm. um but um we decided that there was just too much uh ego and shame involved to to really talk it talk it out and so i would say a little bit before the group started to work with each other they um got into contact but they still haven't talked about everything but to answer your question yes what about charlotte and ben um is this something like what what is your your thoughts on your teammate being someone who could potentially you know have a snap of you at any moment um so it, what is that some how how does ben and charlotte feel about um you working alongside a, a, a ghoul technically ben <laughs> ben um, <laughs> um i think that ben by just his his profession chosen before he knew any of this additional supernatural stuff um you know i fancy ben a a an rpg enthusiast somebody that wouldn't be scared of the revelation of having a ghoul in the midst but would be fascinated by having a ghoul in the midst you know or somebody that has these these present and apparent supernatural powers that maybe go above and beyond research or, you know, prophecy or anything like that. This is real, apparent, visible. Um, I think he would find it intoxicating. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And about um, Charlotte. Yeah, I think, um, I think that she's been in the agency for over a decade. Like, I think she went in when she was like 17. Um, and so it's very possible that Sunny isn't the weirdest person that she's worked with. So I think I think this is uh, I think her background as Sunny's is kind of more just another Tuesday for Charlotte than a lot than a lot of people would. So it's kind of like it's something to pay attention to, and she might be curious from a professional standpoint, but she's not like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, um, I think that sort of wraps it up. Unless there's anything that um, any of you want to specifically uh say about your characters anymore and anything like that but um we can go ahead into our intro it is going to be a shorter session this this time just because we were missing two players but next week we'll definitely jump into everything but um yeah do you all feel comfortable with what we sort of built and everything yes okay so 
The moon sits high in the sky, light filtering down through the trees. Clouds move slowly, obscuring the view as the moon glows brighter. A group stands in a circle, hands clasped together at their sides. Sounds of light chanting can be heard, one voice, two voices, three, more and more joining in as the words grow louder. The language is unknown, the sounds guttural and deep, but it continues on and on and on. In the middle of the group, a fire burns, smoke rising into the sky above. The fires spark and embers rise and the group raises their hands into the air as the sound reaches a crescendo. Elsewhere, a machine whirs and beeps in the corner of a small hospital room. Alone, asleep on the bed, a young girl stirs. The heart monitor reacts, the motion on the screen moving faster. The beeps pick up speed as the girl in the bed begins to toss and turn rapidly. The harsh, bright light in the room grows dim as the lights flicker for a few moments before they go completely dark. The sort of darkness that fills the room is unnatural, inky and thick, but it lasts for no longer than a breath. When light fills the room again, the girl's eyes open, a loud gasp leaving her lungs that's immediately cut short when she sees the figure in front of her. The shadow crawls up the bed, tendrils grabbing at the sheets, grabbing at her wrists, pulling her along while she lays paralyzed with fear. She opens her mouth to yell out, but the noise never makes it as the room goes dark again. When the lights come back a moment later, the shadow is gone. The room is as bright as it was before, the machines beep and whir, but the girl is gone. The sheets a mess and empty in her wake. The chanting stops, the group lowers their hands, and the moon glows red. So we're going to go ahead and roll our start of session moves from our two, uh, from our flake and our chosen, and we will pick up with that next week. Um, Thomas, if you'd like to roll your connect the dots move. Oh. Um, at the beginning of each mystery, you look for the wider patterns and the current events might that might be part of it, and you can roll plus sharp. All right, uh, one second. I have so many. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. Taps it's fine. open at this moment. <laughs> uh, sharp. Where are you? This. This. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. It goes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Here we go. Sharp. No. Why is nothing? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, it asked me plus one, minus one forward? No. Yeah, you don't have any forwards right yeah, now. Yeah, no. So on a seven, um, you will get one hold that you get to spend during the mystery to ask one of the following questions. Um, is a person connected to the current events more than they're saying? When and where will the next critical event occur? What does the monster want from the person? Is this connected to a previous mystery? How does this mystery connect to the bigger picture? So that will be your question you can ask at any time during the mystery. Okay. And Ben, our chosen, your start of session move is Destiny's plaything. You roll plus weird to see what is revealed about your immediate future. Okay. I'd like to point out it's a negative modifier on weird for Ben. <laughs> TPK. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Well, you can mark experience. I know. <laughs> um, I would like to, to pull out, I would go ahead and tell you this. In Monster of the Week, there's a mechanic called luck. Um, luck, you can change a roll to a 12, or you can avoid all harm from an injury. You have four luck points. As a chosen, if you ever die, you have to immediately mark a luck point because your mission isn't over to survive. But if you use all of your luck, any hunter, you are technically doomed at the end of it. Would you like to spend a luck to make that a 12 plus? Or would you like to keep the fill? Either way, you get your experience because it is what you rolled. Um, let me ask a question. We, we've had some uh, ad advantages come in here. So um, is there any chance that I could roll for? I would def yes, go ahead. It's not gonna help, but I want <laughs> I want to be able to ask Legion for help. Legion has helped. Uh, yes, go ahead. Steve and Jim have contributed. I want to make their contrib contribution worth something. Kapow! What? Yes. Yes. So, on a seven to nine, just just so everyone knows, a miss means something bad is going to happen to you. So, <laughs> trying to avoid that. On a seven to nine, you will get a vague hint about it. So yeah, next week, 
we will um, dig into what the these roles give these players. And um, yeah, we will pick up with this story. I, I'm Char Charlotte doesn't have a, yeah, you don't have a startup. I thought you had a startup. Yeah. Session. yeah. So um, we can go ahead and go around, uh, do our outros, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about this. Uh, sorry, it was shorter today, everyone, but we're, we're really going to go in. We're going to hit it fast next week. Yeah, I'm Katie. You can find me on the internet at Katie Face everywhere. Um, through the week, Tuesdays through Fridays, I am on Off the Table playing um, various games. Tonight at um, tonight at 8 East or Central Standard Time, we'll be playing Lady Blackbird, Tales from the Blue. I'm very, very excited for that. Um, tomorrow, if you have nothing else to do with your day through the day, I'm starting at noon Eastern Standard Time on Off the Table. Me and Summer are running a 12-hour stream for my birthday on Sunday, um, taking donations to, um, I can go see her next month for her birthday. Bill is going to be playing in a Monster of the Week one shot I'm running tomorrow. It's going to be very, very fun. Um, Seth will be back in Urban Shadows. Uh, That's the second game. Kiana will be running Bluebeard's Bride. And then we'll be, me and Summer will be ending it with Starcrossed. And uh, tomorrow we're going to have all day open of voting on the pairing you want to see. So it's going to be very fun. Um, but yeah, you can find me through the week there on, I'm also on Greyhawk channel and a uh, part of the Cape Lore Live podcast that just came out a couple days ago, usually on Mondays. We'll see <laughs> what happens with that. <laughs> it's, um, it's me being the epitome of class. This next, this last episode we released. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Petra, what about you? Hey everyone, I'm Petra. You can find me on Twitter at P Folkhausen. Um, I'm going to put that or oh, maybe, oh, it's already there. Never mind. Thank you. <laughs> nice. um, so yeah, I'm quite active there. And then you can find the games that I'm writing at petravi.itch.io. Um, I mostly, if, if you haven't noticed already, my, my jam is really the, the spooky, the paranormal, the supernatural, the dark. The, yeah. Every, or everything it's a very like good that. jam. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, go and check it out. Uh, Seth, what about you? Hi, I'm Seth David Andrew Hubbard. Uh, I am I loiter mostly on Twitter, so I will be there at uh, sender uh underscore sender, and I'm also streaming under the same username on uh, sender, and I will be doing that later today probably. And I will also be hanging out in uh, Katie's games tomorrow that I won't be playing in. I will be playing in them, so you should come say hello and yell with me in the chat. And Seth plays my favorite demon in Cape Lord High. Favorite as Katie, blast. least favorite in character. <laughs> <laughs> that tracks, that tracks. <laughs> and I'm going to give it back to Greg and, and say thank you for letting me do this crazy idea. Oh, are you kidding? Uh, uh, thank you. This is, I'm so stoked about that. Uh, Petra, put that link in Zoom and I'll throw it up here on the, um, oops, as I mess up everything. Um, yeah, I'll drop it in here. For, oh, there we go. Kiana got it. Thank you, Kiana. Um, yeah, I, I am so super duper stoked. I, I can't wait to meet everybody else and have their characters come in and integrate and get this story started. Katie, that was a fantastic, spooky, you know, uh, hair raising intro. Uh, it's just the perfect way to start what I'm sure is going to be a fantastic campaign. I love hearing about everybody's characters. Um, I, I've been, I've been, I'll let you in. I've been pocketing Lynn manuel for just the occasion, the special occasion when I was going to pull forth one of my favorite human beings uh, on this or any other planet. And this is it. This is Lin-Manuel's game. And because of Lin-Manuel and Legion, I rolled my highest number to date in Powered by the Apocalypse. This is fate. So I may be the chosen one. <laughs> the hell with Ben. I can't wait. Greg Grimjack21502 on the Twitter, part of the Tales from the Grim team here on the Twitch. A lot of fantastic fun things that are happening. We are in between seasons here, but we have a, 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 a plethora of new offerings to give you. On Monday nights from uh, 6 to around 9, we have The Realms Remembered, which is my D&D 5e Boz Lorman infused campaign. Having a lot of fun over there. Uh, then following that, we have Other Doc, Jim's new Deadlands campaign. Uh, the Road to Desperation begins at 9 p.m. Eastern. Join that. It is fun. May Black Roses Bloom stay... We have just a little bit more story left in that one. The campaign wrapped up, but our epilogues will be forthcoming. We have some fun things planned for that. 
In addition, we have a couple new shows that are coming out in podcast form and will be jumping onto the channel in the interim here during the holidays. Uh, Watchmen will be making a, a brief appearance as they pop in with a Blades from the Dark uh, hack. So that'll be fun. Um, but please, whatever you do, block off the time, take a late lunch next week, whatever happens, be here for the top of the show so you can see me roll another nine or higher, dare I say it, and more importantly, be here for the wonderful story that Katie is going to craft. And with that, I hand it back to Katie. Do you have anything else to say, my soon to be birthday friend? <laughs> uh, no, 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 um, this is great. I'm very excited to, like, like Greg said, get everyone in here specifically. Next week, we'll probably do just a little bit of housekeeping at the top of the hour, um, just to, to elaborate on some relationships. But yeah, we're going to um, going to get in there. They're, they're really, really, really hot and heavy. Um, I'm trying to think of things to say, but they, they all sound like dirty things. So I'm just gonna say no, I'm good, Greg. Let, let, <laughs> let's just end it here before I introduce, uh, embarrass myself. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So as we say goodbye to old and new friends and the Legion and those of you watching on YouTube, as the campfire goes down, there's only one thing left to say. You can't always roll in that 20s or nines, but you can <laughs> always role play. We'll see you next time, friends.